one, zero, and liftoff, liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery and the first International Microgravity Laboratory. Houston is now patrolling. Welcome to Upfront. Today we're going to put a spotlight on a piece of Canadian history. 2017 marks Canada's 150th anniversary since Confederation. It also marks the 25th anniversary of Canada's first woman in space, the world's first neurologist in space, Dr. Roberta Bonder. Roberta Lynn Bonder was born and raised in Sault Ste. Marie. So in this community, there's nowhere more than here where we recognize the 25 years of her accomplishments. January 22, 1992, every Suite that was here at the time will have this burned into their memory watching as Dr. Bonder blasted into the history books. We want to celebrate the 25 years and in Sault Ste. Marie it seems just like yesterday. Dr. Roberta Bonder, extraordinary Canadian and hometown hero. Two, one, boost your mission and lift off of the space shuttle to Does it seem that 25 years has gone by since your mission into space? It doesn't seem like 25, sometimes it seems like five years. On January 22nd, 1992, Dr. Roberta Bondar made history as Canada's first woman in space. What was going through your mind as you entered Discovery? The vehicle is a seething monster, actually. We were at the 195 foot level, so we weren't at the top of the vehicle to get into the orbiter and all of the, the gases were coming away from the, from the tank, and it was surreal. Were you ever afraid? I mean, six years prior to you leaving, there was the Challenger disaster. I have always said that there are three dangerous parts about space. The launch, the landing, and everything in between. You train for this, you focus on it, you don't focus on all the things that might go wrong, you focus on what you can do if they do go wrong. But the launch and mission aboard Discovery went well. She trained more than eight years for this. And as the world's first neurologist in space, Dr. Bondar conducted more than 40 experiments from 18 well, countries during the first international the microgravity the laboratory mission. And that's a lot of countries to try to keep happy when you have a timeline that's only seven days long and we're given an extra day in orbit. For more than a decade, Roberta Bondar headed an international research team to find new connections between astronauts recovering from the microgravity of space and neurological illnesses here on Earth. Over the years, she received numerous awards and honours, including the Order of Canada, the Order of Ontario, a star on Canada's Walk of Fame. And last Friday night, she received the Rotary Lifetime Achievement Award. Is the best thing you've ever done becoming an astronaut or becoming a doctor? Hands down is becoming a physician. I mean, that's, that's something that I've been able to help so many people. I've been able to save lives. You made history, first Canadian woman. I made history too because we did the coin toss for the Super Bowl game and they tossed <laughs> me with the coin. But yes, yeah, so there was a lot of history made in that flight. It was quite emotional to be able to actually get on the vehicle and go in space and do this and do it right. I want to welcome you to the uh, Canadian Bush Plain Heritage Center. Uh, this is actually a very appropriate setting for our conversation that we're going to have here today because it's the home of Canada's first woman in space, Dr. Roberta Bonder. And I'm joined today with um, uh, three gentlemen uh, whom I want to uh, introduce at this time. I have uh, Steve Butlin, who is a former uh, mayor of City of Sault Ste. Marie and former member of parliament. I have uh, Dr. Frank Sarlo, who is a uh, former uh, lawyer, or probably still a lawyer, but mm. uh, author and a strong, strong community leader and also uh, former Mayor Joe Fertizzi and former City CAO. So welcome gentlemen, good to see you here. Nice good to, to be, be here. here. Well, uh, this is just a really a great, great time to get together and have a conversation. Uh, I think that if I said to each of you gentlemen, uh, January 22, 1992, where were you and what were you doing? It would conjure up some pretty strong memories. So Frank, I think that of all people, you've got something to say about this. Where were you on January 22nd, <laughs> 1992, and how did you feel about it? I was at the launch and I was pretty, pretty excited. Joe was the mayor at the time and he and council asked me to represent the city at the uh, NASA's 
cocktail party the night before the launch and a group of people that were working on the Algoma Community Action Team at that time all paid our own way and went, went down to the launch and they treated us really, really well. So we, uh, we had this, uh, uh, I was allowed to speak at the Nassau cocktail party and we gave them the synopsis of things that were going on in Sault Ste. Marie. If you remember, we had uh, the ice sculpture of the Discovery, exact size, and a sculpture of Roberta Bonner that a number of businesses in the city had uh, had chipped in and paid for the sculptures uh, now to be done. This, if I remember, was a snow sculpture because of the Bonsu Winter Carnival. Yes, well, the Bonsu, a matter of fact, they tried for years to raise the money to do it. And because of Roberta going into space, it was very easy to raise the money and get the ice sculpture done. And it lasted for a number of years after that with, with ice sculptures during Bonsu. Anyway, when we uh, did get, get there, we were able to promote Sault Ste. Marie before 250 people. And uh, we had done a lot of work before going down. And we had a map that was done that we put up on the wall. And it showed Sault Ste. Marie on the Interstate 75, going all the way to Cape Kennedy on, seven, on 75. Good. And that uh, was accepted extremely well by the people. Who would have been some of the people there in that uh, NASA reception? Yeah, they were all the advisors launch. to the Algoma Community Action Team. Like George Chinook uh, was there, Bill Malpass, uh, Dave Elgy, Russ Ramsey, uh, and sure. people that had been there. The Suites. And yeah, who and would they, have been there they were very, there? They, they had this great feeling of pride that we, we had Roberta sure. going up into sure. space. Who so would have been the people on like the NASA side and so on? Who would be some well, of those It would attendees? be the organization, both Canadian okay. and American, though okay. the cocktail party was the U.S. Uh, the U.S. group. Okay, and, uh, interesting. Uh, it was their invitees <clears throat> to, uh, to it. So the day of the launch, uh, we were there on an island, uh, just looking right at the uh, at the shuttle, wow. and uh, I'll never forget it because uh, you had the microphones there, and you could hear the conversation between mm. the people on board and uh, control, <clears throat> so you could hear everything that's going on. And then when the countdown started, uh, the island, of course, was surrounded by water, and all of a sudden you could see the manti and they started moving before we could see anything or hear anything. Wow. They were disrupted. And then all of a sudden it, uh, uh, the blast off took and here we were and we were so excited, it was, uh, it was amazing. Now this would have been emotions <clears throat> running high as well because this was the first shuttle launch after the Challenger tragedy. Wow. So I'm sure there was some chatter That's why about it, that. it was, you know, we were all standing standing there and praying and praying a lot. But a really interesting story, I think, it's an example of, uh, of the pride of Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, we had done these t-shirts with Roberta's name on and Sault Ste. Marie's name, and uh, a former teacher of, uh, of Roberta's came up to us and said, where can I buy one of those t-shirts? And George Chinook, in his only George's way, takes off his t-shirt and, gives it to and him. puts wow. it on. That's a great story. Okay, while that's happening, somebody from the Orlando newspapers takes, takes a picture, takes a picture mm -hmm. of great. this. Great, great. And the next day, in all of the Florida papers, is this picture of George wow. handing his t-shirt over. But even more importantly, the story of what was going on in Sault Ste. Marie sure. was also Put there. Uh, put there. So we're extremely important. Great day. Steve. Day you never forget. Oh, I'm sure. And for all of us. And Steve, you were a member of Parliament at the time. So for you, on the day of the launch, do you remember what was going on uh, in the nation's capital? Yes, I do. Uh, researching back and saying, where was I? Well, I knew where I was, but had I anything to say at that point in time? Uh, so I guess I bring a different perspective. Frank was right on the scene, so he's as close as could be. Joe's at home base in Sault Ste. Marie. And, and the mayor and I was in Ottawa and a bit, a, a bit removed, but it wasn't often as a, I suppose, a third party uh, backbencher at the time. All of a sudden, Sault Ste. Marie was in the spotlight mm -hmm. and uh, Roberta Bondar. So I was able to get up in the House of Commons and acknowledge what Roberta was doing, is doing and had done. And uh, it was a special, special uh, moment in certainly my uh, uh, political experiences, all of a sudden, Sault Ste. Marie mm -hmm. was in the limelight in Ottawa, and it's 
it's something you don't forget. Did you find life. did you find that other uh, members of the house were joining with you all of a sudden? Now this was about Canada. I mean, they they realized this was Canada's first woman in space. Was there a sense of this was Canadian history being made? I I, I don't think there's any doubt, particularly amongst my my uh, immediate uh, seating partners. Mm -hmm. But in in looking what I into the Hansard of other provinces it was not only in Ottawa but Saskatchewan and Alberta in the legislatures there they were talking okay. about the space shuttle sure. and Sault Ste. Marie and Roberta Bondar wow. so it, indeed it was nationwide and mm. also international For and sure. really yeah. it was out of this world Absolutely. <laughs> attention. Well, well put. <laughs> and, for Sault Ste. Marie. And Joe, as the mayor of the city of Sault Ste. Marie, we were epicenter here. What what was going on for you that day? What did we I, do in Sault Ste. Marie I, that day? I, I think like every other Sioux, we were tied to the TV, but uh, uh, I, I think a lot of preparation was in the works uh, for her return, oh. her safe return uh, to Earth and, uh, and her visit to Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, the city had decided that it would honor Roberta uh, with the city's Medal of Merit and had announced on uh, New Year's Eve that she would be the recipient. Uh, the community was truly pumped uh, about uh, her going into space. The name Sault Ste. Marie was represented every time Roberta's name was mentioned in all of the media leading up to it and uh, uh, everyone in the community was primed not only for uh, the launch and, and the uh, the space journey, uh, but for what would happen when she returned, so that we could honor her. And uh, we'll talk, I'm sure, a little bit later about uh, the things the community did. But uh, uh, all of us were, were as Frank said, uh, very aware of the previous uh, launch uh, and and the tragedy that occurred. Uh, that was, uh, I'm sure, uh, forefront uh, for all of us, and and all of us, while very excited that one of our own. Uh, was 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 in this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're praying that uh, she would have a safe journey and uh, and a safe return. And uh, uh, as I said at the outset, the whole community was priming up. Uh, we were going through a difficult time mm -hmm. uh, in, in our economy at that point in time, and we were looking for a hero. Yeah. And Roberta <laughs> provided us that opportunity, right. and so everyone was pumped. Uh, uh, about you know getting on board and 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 being with her during the journey, mm -hmm. and hopefully getting a chance to be with her following the journey. Waiting for her return, that's great. And this has been super to think about back at the day itself. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later, and we'll come back to that shortly. It was a homecoming Roberta Bonder couldn't quite believe. Thank you. School children lined the streets, flags in nearly every hand. The astronaut who'd gone round the world for her country had come back to Sault Ste. Marie, a city that truly loves her. She's our heroine. She's our gold medal, all rolled into one. It's a sense of pride and that there is some positive things going on in our community. We are all lifted with Roberta, and we'll stay lifted. They'd been planning this party for weeks. People left their jobs for the morning just to greet Bonder at the airport. Students, too, from the high school where Bonder's interest in science blossomed. She's our highest flying eagle, and we're just really proud of her. Even Bonder's publicity-shy mother came out. She was very professional. I was very proud to see her handle herself so well. <laughs> The astronaut family and friends call Bobby will have to get used to a new name, Hero. They don't go in for heroes in Canada, but I hope they can find room for one. At City Hall, Bonder was ushered into a special song written just for her. Makes life here a really great deal. School children sang another. Sault Ste. Marie is a great place to be. The Sioux hasn't had much to sing about lately with its economy worsening. The Bondar has uplifted spirits. She showed a film of her space adventures and made people here feel good about themselves again. This is the most beautiful group of people that I have seen on my turn since space. I couldn't see you all when I was up there, but I knew you were around. And I just want to thank you so much for the outpouring of your hearts and your souls. 
Later, Bonda revisited the space shuttle Discovery, this one carved in tribute to her, completely out of ice. Roberta Bonder is a lifelong learner and educator. She believes children should be encouraged to be curious and excited about learning. Her mission in space has inspired thousands of children over the last 25 years. There's nowhere where this is more evident than in her own public school where she grew up, Queen Elizabeth Elementary School in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. We're celebrating actually the 25th anniversary of Roberta Bondar going into space on the STS-42 Discovery. We've all been working really hard on researching Roberta, Dr. Roberta Bondar and we're going to come up and share what we've learned. So we'll start with Presley. She was born on December 4th, 1945 in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. I learned that R Roberta Bondar was also is also a, a scientist and a doctor. The coolest thing that I found out Roberta, about Roberta Bonder is that she is a photographer. I like space. I'm hoping for one of my birthdays or Christmas, I'm really hoping I get to take a flight to space. Female, Female Athlete of the Year mm -hmm. Award. Excellent. I learned that she was the first Canadian woman astronaut and the first neurologist in, in space. We have been studying Earth and space systems and the contributions Canadians make to society and technology. And it has been very meaningful for the students when they recognize that Roberta Bondar was once a student of Queen Elizabeth School and started her study of space right here. She studied at American and Canadian universities. Roberta Bondar went, worked at the Forestry Center and went to this school. So we are planting a tree at the Forestry Center, so we thought that it'd be special because it's dedicated to our school and she worked at the Forestry Center. Dr. Bonder made a science project about budworms at the Great Lakes Forestry Center where our class visited for a field trip. We hope Dr. Bonder accepts our invitation to the Great Lakes Forestry Center. Dr. Bonder, we are inviting you to the Great Lakes Forestry Center to Canada's 150th anniversary in the spring to plant a tree dedicated to Queen Elizabeth Public School. After the break, we're going to visit the Art Gallery of Algoma and talk to the director there about Roberta Bonder, fine art photographer. A little later on, we're going to go and talk to the mayor of Sault Ste. Marie, and he's going to tell us about how Roberta's going to be part of the Sioux Celebrates Canada 150. So stick around, more to come. at the Canadian Heritage Bush Plain Centre having a chat with uh, three gentlemen who are really uh, men who are very knowledgeable about uh, Sault Ste. Marie but also very much a part of um, our 25th anniversary celebrations that we are looking at this year with Dr. Roberta Bonder, certainly Canada's first woman in space and a very proud Suite. So, um, you know, we all know that Roberta loves Sault Ste. Marie and whenever she it comes back here, uh, she does things at our request. I, I think uh, particularly how she has helped with her accomplishments, put us on the map. And uh, Frank, I think of homecoming in 1998, that was something that really was quite significant. And uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, Roberta, Roberta is uh, like so many people from, from Sault Ste. Marie. They, they have a great pride in, in the community that they came from, and they're always there to, to assist. And when we asked Roberta to come back for uh, the Achievers Banquet at, uh, uh, during homecoming, she uh, was very happy to be here and with her family. Uh, at the same time, we had people like Ken Danby and Morley Torgoff. And the three of them, the following morning after the Achievers Banquet, uh, held, uh, I think it was about three or four hours of time with young people in Sault Ste. Marie, explaining the importance of leadership and their experience in that. And Roberta was a big part of, uh, was a big part of that. And she was open with her time. She was open with her experiences. And she had no hesitation in, in giving advice to young people on how they could help themselves through life. 
Well, one of the things that comes to my mind when you talk about that Achievers Banquet, it was at the Sault Ste. Marie Armory, and I think it held a thousand, mm -hmm. something like that. But it was the camaraderie among all of these people. And you know, I remember several were medical doctors, I think of the Black family and so on. But one of the things that I observed was how they all admired each Dr. Other. Bonder. Well, do, each and other, each but other. also yeah. Dr. Bonder. They, 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 and I think it was Roberta that got up and said, there must be something pretty special about the water in Sault Ste. Marie, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but really, you're right, each other. But I well, think, when you look at Roberta's yeah. achievements, like, it's absolutely amazing. You know, and first of all, getting her doctorate and then going forward and accomplishing the things she did at McMaster and then going and just getting ready to go into space and then everything that she's done afterward. She's an extremely special person. And I think, Steve, you were saying a few minutes ago, um, when we talk about Roberta's accomplishments, not just on January uh, 22nd, 1992, but since then, um, you, th you have this federal perspective because you've been there. You've been a member of federal parliament. And you, know, you can see uh, how uh, an extraordinary Canadian can impact a small town. So what do you think about that, how Roberta has impacted Sault Ste. Marie? You've always been in Sault Ste. Marie, so you've been along on this uh, journey. So how do you see that impact on our community? Absolutely, uh, as Frank has intimated, uh, she is an extraordinary, not just Canadian Sault Ste. Marie native, but an extraordinary human being. She is an orator of, of renown. And I, one quote somebody said, the first thing that you get from Roberta's talks, her humanistic approach to things. And right away she's got your attention. Uh, but her experience beyond being uh, an astronaut and a neurosurgeon and an environmentalist and an orator and an author and a photographer and all of the things she's, yeah. she's accomplished yeah. Uh, but Sault Ste. Marie is somehow always a, not necessarily the focal point, but Sault Ste. Marie is a part mm -hmm. of everything she has accomplished. So she may, i be careful here, she may be our foremost and greatest hero of all, one that is recognized just mm -hmm. absolutely everywhere. So it, it, it brings Sault Ste. Marie to the forefront with uh, apologies to a friend, Phil Esposito, who has some international <laughs> renown, but I think Roberta may have surpassed. She's a class of her own, quite frankly. It's a I class mean, of her One first Canadian woman astronaut. And exactly, so and uh, uh, something I read in, in, in preparation for today is saying not only was she the first woman, but, well, that's the point. Astronauts, the first neurologist too. astronauts usually have been men, so just accommodating a woman in the spacecraft, she was the first one there. Yeah. And she alluded to the fact it wasn't easy being the only woman because yeah. I'm told women are different from men. I think you know that. You've got three daughters. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Joe, for Sault Ste. Marie, um, at the time of the flight, January 1992, that was a t time in our community when there was a lot going on. She really impacted Sault Ste. Marie. What are your thoughts on that? Frank uh, was part of the uh, leadership of a team that was trying to bring uh, a spirit back to Sault Ste. Marie because we were in one of those cycles that our steel uh, industry uh, was experiencing that uh, the community needed an uplift and uh, Frank and the action team uh, uh, that ended up going down for the launch, uh, in fact, uh, were working with community, other community leaders uh, and this gave us something that the community really could grasp onto uh, in, 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 in years ahead uh, when these things happen, the Greyhounds provided that. But uh, that year we had a launch uh, involving our, our, uh, our, our, our Sioux astronaut, uh, our only astronaut from this community. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the way the community reacted when she came home following the launch uh, I, I think says a lot for how much respect and love there was from this community for her. And uh, uh, I recall very vividly uh, uh, going to the airport. We had prepared for a parade uh, in the community, uh, and not just for Roberta to be riding through the community and to go to a place where people mm -hmm. would receive her, but the schools had called and asked whether or not they could be part of the reception. And we mapped out from the airport to uh, 
uh, where we had the, uh, the reception, uh, different schools uh, that uh, wanted to get involved. We had her in, in a car in a parade of vehicles uh, with her mother, uh, and children were waving Canadian flags all along the route outside the schools. Mm -hmm. she, she wanted to stop, and you, you reminded me of that. She didn't just want to wave, she <laughs> wanted to touch the children. The mm -hmm. children wanted to touch her, so I remember uh, her stopping the car and saying, stop, I want to talk to these yeah. kids. Uh, so to tie we were, into, and we were to, in February, it was yeah, winter, we were in February. it was cold. We were in to yeah. tie into Steve's uh, you know, talk of, of uh, human, humanistic uh, yeah. approaches. Uh, uh, she is very good about making people uh, feeling very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Here's this person who just <laughs> came from outer space, mm -hmm. uh, you know, coming to the Sioux and wanting to talk to you. Yeah. What impression would that make on a child? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure it made a great impression. And the whole community reacted that way. Uh, we went to a Greyhound game. Uh, it was part of the itinerary for on her return. When she marched out onto center ice, with a uh, greyhound sweater? With a greyhound sweater. Uh, uh, I, I don't think anything could have turned that crowd into a more raucous group uh, mm -hmm. than, than that that day. And uh, yes. Could I add to that one, Joe? Sure. Uh, the reopening of our uh, Sault Ste. Marie lock, even if it's recreational. Right. That's right. And she was on the first boat going through. And I can remember that day, I said, there were other people on that boat mm -hmm. as the first going through. But everybody was, Roberta Bonders here, and the excitement. So, it, yeah. 1992 was the year, but well, carried every, on for it just carried years, on for sure. and carried yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, I've known you for forever, we've known each other. Okay, but that day when she came home, I don't think I've ever seen you that excited. It was, it was fantastic to watch. You know, you were yeah. right, right you into it. You set the it, pace, you set the and, pace. And you had that feeling and set the, Set, set the tone, the tone for yeah. all of us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I was going to say a few moments ago when you were talking, Joe. You were the mayor of our community. I know because you've told me. This is probably one of your proudest times in your own history to be the mayor of a community with this occurrence. But you made sure that this community, I don't think you said no to anything. I think the phone didn't stop ringing. I think Sharon Robertson was with you at the time exactly. in your administration. And I can remember Sharon's ear was getting red from being on that phone. The phone didn't stop ringing once people knew she was coming. Yep. And the thing I also remember is CBC came with her. Yep. Remember? Yep. The CBC guys were uh, floored. They, they were scrambling to keep up with her. And when you did three days, I think, at what was Memorial Gardens at the time, Esser Centre, yes. you filled it for three days. Exactly. And every Sioux, I had an opportunity to be down there. And every time she came in, you, th you mentioned the Voyage of Discovery written by the Harmony Sisters, a beautiful piece of music. Uh, yeah. it, it set the tone. What about that? That's uh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And uh, any time yeah. Roberta entered an event or a yeah, there was venue. That beautiful music. They played that music yeah. and, 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 and it was like her theme song. And yes. uh, yeah. Frank alluded to uh, um, the, uh, you know, the, the, the snow sculptures. Uh, a lot of people wanted to do something to help mm -hmm. honor her. Uh, raising money, for example, for the bronze uh, head statue uh, was not a big deal. The, I think the Knights of Columbus yes. came forward yeah. mm -hmm. and, and offered the money for that. Uh, people wanted to uh, uh, get signs up. Uh, so we had to get signs up to all the entrances to the city before she got there, home of uh, Roberta Bonder. The pride that this community mm -hmm. turned on to, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think can't be replicated in anything that I can recall in my time here. And I doubt anything in the future is going to make us more proud of that time in our, uh, in our community. Yeah, it, was a great, uh, it really worked. Yeah. And uh, it, was, uh, it was there Perfect for all timing. of us. Yeah, it was. Uh, we had been uh, we'd been there and uh, with it that year we also uh, uh, were successful with Algoma Steel coming forward yeah and as you said we were successful with the Greyhounds and you know it really was part of that uh, that big turnaround for the city yeah. and uh, so it was super well and that's why uh, I think that um, you know this conversation we've kind of centered it a little bit around the our, our local hero but an extraordinary Canadian and I think that comes through in what we've been talking about. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes too. Thanks, gentlemen. The 155 Air Cadet Squadron are pleased to announce their aircraft maintenance project, which is a partnership with the Canadian Bushplane Heritage Centre, 
and the 155. This joint venture is a start to the Dr. Roberta Bondar Air Cadet Training Program with aircraft maintenance as the first phase. This is the official announcement of a new training program for Air Cadet, and this one is particularly interest, uh, focused on um, what we call the power plant of the aircraft. So it's the maintenance of the engine, etc. It's something that I wish I could have done <laughs> when, I was, uh, when I was their age of the Air Cadets. Uh, it's really a great way of getting very physical with an airplane. The uh, Air Cadet um, Aircraft Maintenance and Repair yep. Program that uh, certainly from a federal point of view my former ward mate and good friend our MP Terry Sheehan who has just arrived here, uh, you know the federal government would say that looking at Air Cadets you're looking at our future, you're looking at the uh, you know, RCAF and, and what we can do as Canada to be ready and here in the Sioux with JD Arrow as I was mentioning earlier we know the industry and the economic uh, impact of that. Um, former Councillor Sheehan, MP Sheehan was involved with that as a business startup, a small business. Well, it's a great program for Sault Ste. Marie because uh, uh, the aircraft maintenance program is uh, important. I worked in my other life uh, in apprenticeship in the, with the Ministry of Training Colleges and Universities and it's, a, uh, it's an area that's really growing. There's a lot of opportunities for uh, young people to work. Uh, you know, we have a number of companies in the area that are into uh, aircraft maintenance like uh, JD and some other folks that are uh, getting into that stuff and so I know how important it is um, you know, working with these, these people and, uh, you know, the federal government takes the, uh, uh, the Air Cadets very seriously, the Army. Uh, it's a great training program and opportunities for our young people to uh, get trained and get, uh, contribute back to society. Well, if you really love airplanes, besides wanting to fly an airplane, you like to know what makes them hum and makes them tick. And, and pilots aren't ones that fix airplanes. So if you really want to get physical with an airplane and really feel more a part of it, you really have to take some training to understand the engines and that's what this new training program that's named after me will be all about. So I think it's really important for them to be able to see the guts of an airplane and know the precision that's required in order for anyone to make an airplane safe so it doesn't fall out of the sky. Bonder's photographs make me feel like I've been on a journey to places I'll never get to see firsthand. She looks at the world through the lenses of photographer, scientist, medical doctor, astronaut, and author. Who better to be an ambassador for Canada 150 as the Sioux celebrates this great country? Well, I'm joined here today with uh, Yasmina Jovanovic, the director of the Art Gallery of Algoma. We're standing in the Art Gallery of Algoma, which is in Sault Ste. Marie, one of our real jewels. And Jasmina, thank you for letting us join you here today. It's my great pleasure and honor to be invited to be part of this important documentary and also to touch base only to scratch the surface about the artwork of Dr. Roberta Bonder. Well, actually, it's 2017, and this is the 25th anniversary of Dr. Bonder's historic space flight. And you came to Sault Ste. Marie what year? 2011, summer of 2011. And in 2011, uh, I think there was an exhibition here yes. of Dr. Bonder's in the fall, so one of your first exhibitions. It was actually my first public, big public opening in my new job here in the Sioux. I wow. moved to the Sioux because of the this position, work. this Great. work. And we're glad that you did. Thank you. <laughs> and what is unique about our conversation here is we talk about Dr. Bonder, the artist. Uh, most Suites, when you talk about Dr. Roberta Bonder, they think about a very famous astronaut, but you actually met her as an artist. Yes. So tell us a little bit about her work. So my first introduction to Dr. Bonder was through her art, and it was a delightful one. The exhibition opening was hugely popular. We had, I don't know, a couple of hundred people or more at the actual opening. Here it's at the art gallery. Here at the art gallery. It was in the main gallery and it included a variety of different topics, but they're all really connected to the mm. planet Earth because she does manage to connect all of her uh, multi-levels of her experiences in life and express all of that through her photography. That's actually one of the things that Dr. Bonner likes to bring out is that she's a physician, she's a medical exactly. physician, she's a scientist, she's an artist, she's an astronaut. So the first thing that struck me seeing her photographs in real life was that precision. Okay, in interesting. The, in the l moment that she decides to capture in her photographs, they're perfect. 
or next to perfect if there is perfection. I don't know if we want to tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, they are, and they're stunningly beautiful because I think she's using all of those experiences and training that right. she actually has over the years, years of her right. career that she captures the moment uh, that actually is to her liking, which is really a moment of perfection that nature offers to us. Right. And I think I remember at one of her exhibitions, uh, an, a fellow artist actually describing her work, and maybe this one on the wall gives us a little bit of that, is that she has a very unique use of light. Yes. That this, this individual spoke about yes. how she uses light in her photograph. She uses light to the perfection, and I think she is very patient photographer that waits for that moment yes. and in conversations with her I learned that she's sometimes even risking her life almost <laughs> going to different spots so she gets the perfect composition that will have perfect perfect colors uh, perfect lighting mm -hmm. and that perfect moment when something occurs and she waits for it. I've heard her talk about hanging out of a helicopter trying yes. to catch some of our Canadian national parks when she did the uh, Millennium Project for Canada and, in 2000. And actually, some of her photographs are so perfect and so beautiful in that capturing that moment that they look almost to me as abstract paintings. Right. Yes, if I you know look you at mean. them from the distance, you don't really even realize what it is at first, because it looks like a painting. Mm -hmm. She likes to use large format. Yes, yeah. and I also love that she plays with how she prints her images. Right. So she yes. uses textured paper and gives almost that third dimension to some of them. And then I think she did, there's a book, uh, she's done several books, yes. uh, Passionate Vision, Landscape of Dreams, uh, Arid Edge of Earth, and in the Arid Edge of Earth she was doing deserts. Yes. And she had a lot of black and white work. Yes. And sometimes people think, oh, you know, look at the world without color. But there's some very interesting techniques in using black yes. and white. And also she uses different cameras and she plays with all of that. But again, the whole playfulness ends in this stunningly beautiful image that she captures it at the perfect moment. Yeah. Wow, and I think the thing, as I said, I really was looking forward to our conversation because, um, as I said, most Suites think of Roberta as certainly one of us, born and raised here, but you came to Sault Ste. Marie from Winnipeg. You'd been in Winnipeg for about 20 years, and I imagine you had heard of Dr. Bonder Absolutely, as a Canadian yes, yes. Uh, woman, uh, yes. pioneer uh, as an astronaut, but uh, I, I'm very interested in this time uh, with you and your perspective as an artist. In all of her work, what she is really projecting through visual uh, language is her admiration and love for our planet. The planet, that's right. And the environment. Yeah. So she's not really um, doing it in, in many words, but she's pointing to certain topics that we all are concerned with and should be concerned with. That educate in, us. That educate yes. us, yes. and sometimes visual language like that, subtle very language, powerful. is very powerful and more powerful than using words. And I think it crosses the age groups as yes. well. I know that the Roberta Bonder Foundation yes. works extensively with yes. children, yes. but through the art it also reaches adults. Exactly, exactly. So it's covering the whole span of different people and also touching up upon topics that are not necessarily always pleasant to discuss. Right. But the photographs are beautiful. So it, <laughs> it can be a conversation starter. Well, thank you, Jasmine. I really appreciate the time with you today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And it is now I consider myself to be part of the community. And Oh, you are. Very <laughs> much so. Very much so. Uh, and I'm really pleased to, to, to be able to share this moment coming from this town. That's right. So. Thank you. And I understand that you caught a glimpse of Canada during your mission. What struck you most during the site? I must say that uh, for people who think that our country, when it's wintertime, is not exciting, let me tell you, it's exceptionally exciting uh, from space. Very, very clear. And uh, I just can't, you know, I, I, I wish I could just have a, a sit down and walk across every mile of this beautiful country because it just looks so exciting uh, from up here. It's just beautiful. In addition to reflecting on the spectacular beauty of Canada from her vantage point high in orbit, Dr. Bondar also offered a more down-to-earth view of what makes this country special. And I think that all Canadians should be very pleased with the things that we do, different things, the variety of things we do, and the wonderful things that we share in our culture and our spirits. I think uh, our country has great potential, and I think it's up to each one of us to be sure that we achieve our potential, especially the young people. 
And by all accounts, Dr. Bondar's role in Discovery's mission has been a resounding success. Three gentlemen who are joining me in a great conversation talking about uh, Dr. Roberta Bonder, one of our own, um, first Can Canada's first woman in space, as well as our own country's uh, 150th anniversary in 2017. So Steve, I'm gonna ask you as a former member of parliament, but certainly a, a Canadian and uh, a very um, prominent um, man in our country who has been at the community level as a mayor, as a sitting city councillor now, former member of parliament, the idea of celebrating Canada and our 150 years as a country and tying that in with the um, you know, coinciding of Dr. Roberta Bonder's 25th anniversary, silver anniversary, 1992, when she flew and became Canada's first woman in space. How do you see that that impacts the community at the local level when we celebrate those kinds of things? Well, 150 years, of course, and we in Canada are not amongst probably the, the most fortunate people on this planet, uh, uh, when you see the world situation, nobody is more fortunate than we. We need to. I think that's agreed. Yeah. I hope we should appreciate that, and this is time to reflect on where we've been and where we are. And Roberta's 25th anniversary, yes, as you as indicated, coincides and say, well, here's something that we can focus on and I gather she is the honorary chair of the whole uh, year's uh, celebration under your capable chairmanship, chairpersonship. <laughs> That's uh, okay. So it's just a time for reflection and once again in looking at the accomplishments of Roberta, something really hit me. He said she has received 24 honorary degrees in North America. I don't know if that's a Guinness Book of Records, but it, it's 24. That shows you how prominent and respected, and respected yeah. she is. So, let Along us with uh, Order of Canada, Order, Order of Canada, Ontario, those, Canadian Medical Hall of Fame, it just goes on Canada's on Walk on. of Fame, yeah. eight earned degrees. Yeah. Yeah. And, Extraordinary Canadian. And of course, our Medal of Merit. <laughs> of course, our own Sault Ste. Marie Medal of Merit. Up, up, walk of Fame here. To, yeah, to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah to Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah. So, Let's reflect, let, reflect, let's give thanks, and let's once again recognize Roberta Bonder. And again, Frank, you, uh, I said in our introduction, you are a very strong community leader. I, I, we could do a special on you and all that you've done for Sault Ste. Marie. And uh, Dr. Frank Sarlo, uh, I believe in even your own doctorate, you centered it around a little bit coming from a community perspective. How do you see an anniversary like this of Roberta's how it impacts and even inspires a community. Well, you know, again, what it does is bring back all of all of those memories. It gives us the opportunity to remind people here. Uh, it's part of our history. Yes, you know, that's, that's the point uh, for sure. It's so important. And the nice part is, it's it's a very inspiring part of our uh, part of our history. And you, as chair of of the celebration, and her as the honorary chair, I think demonstrates that. Uh, that it's extremely important to Sault Ste. Marie, and in my opinion, the country, because uh, you know Sault Ste. Marie has been a proud member of the whole, the whole country, mm -hmm. and uh, our people have accomplished uh, quite a bit over the years, and Roberta signifies that because nobody's accomplished more. Mm -hmm. You know, in my um, former life, before I was uh, sitting on city council, I was with the Economic Development Corporation, and you know, we did a lot of the marketing on behalf of the city, as you know, and I can remember um, one of my very first contacts with Dr. Bonder was getting in touch with her office to ask if we could use some of her statements in our marketing because uh, her um, voyage went over the Great Lakes. So she was able to look out the window of that space shuttle and look down and see and know that she could see where Sault Ste. Marie was located. And Sault Ste. Marie is geographically located in the mm. center of North America and in Canada. And I really believe that our history that we make here is a very important part of Canada's history. We go right back to our first peoples and uh, late 1700s and the original meeting place, Powating, um, all kinds of things that Roberta, I think, captures in, in what her, she's accomplished. And Joe, again, uh, as, as a former CAO, for, former mayor, again, a proud community leader, 
um, do you see that this kind of history can inspire citizens in Sault Ste. Marie? Well, ag again, uh, we live in, in a community that uh, continues to enjoy uh, the benefits of the hard work of, 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 a, of a lot of people going yes. back a long time. Yes. Sault Ste. Marie uh, uh, may be celebrating 150 years with the rest of Canada of our country, but Sault Ste. Marie was a settlement some 400 years ago. Yes. And as you indicated, uh, we're at the center of Canada, but we also are at the beginning of Canada's history as a settlement, never mind a nation. Right. Uh, and uh, Sault Ste. Marie celebrating uh, uh, Canada's history along with Dr. Roberta's, uh, uh, you know, 25, yeah. 25 years uh, reminds us of all of the things over a very long history yes. uh, that Sault Ste. Marie uh, needs to celebrate. We're resilient people. Uh, I mean, you just have to look outside right now and see the, the snow <laughs> that we deal with on a regular basis. Uh, we're not a large community, but I think uh, uh, we're, we're well known throughout uh, all of North America mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, for our steel, uh, uh, for our shipping, uh, uh, and uh, for the resilience of the people. Dr. Roberta Bonder gives us, uh, you know, that sense of pride, uh, and uh, I think helps us to, uh, uh, you know, to make sure that we keep reminded of uh, the kind of people that make up the history yeah. of not just Canada but our own community. It, it, I mean, I yes. speak to inspiration of, of young people, and one of the more famous quotes of uh, Dr. Roberta Bonder was, as an eight-year-old, she said, "I dreamt about being a spaceman," in her words, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. So for young people, you can dream and aspire yep. to something and you can achieve. Yeah. That's right, Steve. I can remember her talking at different times when she'd be giving talks or here in the Sioux for some reason, talking about being out at the family cottage on uh, Lake Superior out in the Batuana area and looking up at the stars and uh, <laughs> just being so filled with wonder. Okay, um, yeah. Her family were great educators, her mom and dad, uh, Mildred and Ed, and her sister Barbara, <laughs> education and exploration and curiosity are foundational to them as a family. It's what she grew up with. And she's often said that Sault Ste. Marie provided her a fantastic setting in which to become an explorer and to um, you know, keep piquing her curiosity. And anybody who spends any time with Roberta knows uh, very quickly that she's a curious person, a continual learner. She's always engaged in you and learning about you and so on and certainly um, has really made us all very proud I, for sure. I think Susan, her message often was shoot for the stars and you never know. That's yeah. right. Uh, I mean, that's, if that's right. A message, Literally you, and figuratively. If that's, that's a, me right. a message you give to children, wow. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Dream. Dream. Yeah. Dream. 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 We're going to be celebrating Canada 150. Um, earlier this year, we celebrated uh, Dr. Bonder at our first city council meeting of the year. The mayor read a proclamation uh -huh. declaring Roberta Bonder days during the days of her voyage, which was January 22nd to 30th. Uh, we showed a clip from the launch and she's going to come back to Sault Ste. Marie again as uh, we requested her to do and, and join the platform with the mayor for Canada Day uh, 150 this year in Sault Ste. Marie. So of all the places she could be in Canada for Roberta, she picks to be back in her home in Sault Ste. Marie. She could be in Ottawa, she could be in anywhere. But we made our request uh, quite some time ago. She would never assume that we want, or presume that she, we want her here, but so we, we made that request early on and she agreed to it. She didn't say, well, I have to wait and see uh, what else comes in. She said, I want to be in Sault Ste. Marie. So the, earlier this year too, actually late last year, the Royal Canadian Mint yeah. issued um, a celebratory uh, coin as a tribute to Dr. Bonder. It's um, a fine silver coin, a $25 coin, and it's available through Canada Post, but it's here on display in the Canadian Bushland Heritage Centre and in City Hall. And that coin uh, was unique. Uh, it has her name on it, and I believe it's the first time ever a person's name has been put on a silver coin, or excuse me, on any coin in Canadian currency other than the Queen's name. And it's also a very uh, special coin. It glows in the dark. Mm -hmm. It's convex on one side and concave on the other. It is a very attractive coin. But for the Royal Canadian Mint to issue that and then to tell us that they wanted to come to Sault Ste. Marie to unveil and launch this coin, that was pretty special too, because again, I think it came through from conversations with Roberta and her team, 
we'd really like to do it in the Sioux if we could. So they did. So again, uh, <coughs> gentlemen, it's been great to reminisce today. Uh, anybody have any last thoughts just on Canada 150, Dr. Roberta Bonder, Silver Anniversary? Just, uh, just one comment, you know. Uh, a number of times I've been asked that uh, Sault Ste. Marie must have millions of people in it. <laughs> and I said, why? This is because everywhere I go, I meet somebody from Sault Ste. Marie or it. hear about something that's happening in Sault Ste. Marie. So I, that, that's yeah. very comical because you remind me of, uh, I was at an event at Roy Thompson Hall a few years ago where Dr. Bonder was speaking in a Women of Excellence series and her publicist was there with her. And somebody came up to her then and said, oh, Dr. Bonder, I'm also from Sault Ste. Marie. And her publicist was born and raised mm -hmm. Torontonian. And she kind of looked at me and kind of rolled her eyes. And she said, everybody's from Sault Ste. Marie. <laughs> and uh, so Roberta said, oh, and where did you live? And the woman said, uh, Woodward Avenue. She said, yep, you're from Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah. Well, uh, so yeah, Turgoff you're right. Said, it's a good place to it's come from. It's a good from. place to come from, that's <laughs> right. Thanks, and fellas, it's been great. <laughs> yeah, I just stay. Yeah, good place to come that. from, a good place to stay. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been great to talk and get together today, and Thank happy Canada ladies. 150. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan. 2017 is a special year in Canada. It's 150 years since Confederation, and all parts of our country are celebrating. In Sault Ste. Marie, it's also the 25th anniversary of Canada's first woman in space, our own Sioux native, Dr. Roberta Bonder. We're celebrating her, and she represents such a part of history. She wrote history. Roberta Bonder is indeed our own hometown hero. Canada celebrating its 150th birthday. We have uh, 1867 was, uh, you know, our first, and uh, this is our 150th. So we're really looking forward to that. It's a milestone for the country and for the community, and we're hoping to do some uh, special things. Dr. Bonder has done so much to make her hometown of Sault Ste. Marie and the rest of Canada proud. She's a Canadian who reached for the stars and accomplished something that will inspire us for generations to come. Tonight at City Council, we had the opportunity to kick off Canada 150 Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, we have a number of initiatives throughout the year and really the information will be uh, unfolding with a detailed calendar throughout the months to come. Uh, we are in a tremendous position to associate Marie because we can call Roberta Bonder our own and uh, we've asked Roberta Bonder to be the honorary ambassador in Sault Ste. Marie for Canada 150. So she'll be coming home and we're really excited about, excited about that and we'll celebrate Canada Day with her. Tremendous to have the first uh, female astronaut in space be from your community, the first neurologist in space. So she's going to help us celebrate uh, Sault Ste. Marie's diversity, uh, our history, and we're going to celebrate our Francophone community, we're going to celebrate our First Nations communities, and we're going to celebrate our multiculturalism and just really embrace what Canada is today and what Canada can be moving forward. Being at the heart of the Great Lakes and on a border really captures a lot of the spirit of Canada. We're in the centre of the country, we link the east and the west, uh, we are friendly with our neighbours to the south, we're a sister city with a twin of the same name, Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, and we are surrounded by the beautiful natural gifts of Sault Ste. Marie and, and, and Canada, that being our fresh air, our, our beautiful forests, uh, our sparkling waters, and uh, it's a great place to celebrate Canada right here in the heart of Canada. January 22nd, 1992. I dare say all Suites will remember it with pride as on that date we watched one of our own, Dr. Roberta Bonder, become the first Canadian woman in space. It's of great importance, uh, not only the riding of Sault Marie, but the uh, country of Canada. And we will be celebrating uh, Dr. Roberta Bonder's um, uh, accomplishment in the riding, but also in the Parliament. Uh, in the nation's capital because it is absolutely wonderful. It's a perfect fit on how uh, this government is really promoting uh, women and their accomplishments to Canada throughout history. And this is making me extremely proud to represent this riding and to be able to call Dr. Roberta Bonder our ambassador for Canada's 150th anniversary. We have a whole uh, week plan leading up to Canada 150, uh, but the Canada Day celebrations uh, will be at Roberta Bondar Park and she'll be participating in all of them. And uh, I invite people to check out the city's website and the Canada 150 part of the city's website, which outlines and will continue to outline and will be filled out over the next number of months uh, what, we're, what we're doing while she's here and what we're doing leading up to Canada Day. Looking back at 25 years in the life of Dr. Roberta Bonder, you may be wondering, 
What is Canada's first woman in space doing today? Roberta lives in Toronto and she comes back to her hometown every year to see family and friends. In 2009, she created the Roberta Bonner Foundation to cultivate in all ages a sense of awe, respect and appreciation for other life forms that share our planet. Just do a web search and you'll soon learn all about Dr. Roberta Bonder, extraordinary Canadian and our hometown hero. Thanks for watching this special edition of Upfront. I'm Susan Myers.